came across a question from former NATO Supreme Commander General Wesley Clark. And he asked his question after the Twin Towers fell and the Pentagon was pulverized on 9-11. And the question he asked was, will we ever be the same? You know, will we ever be the same? And, and here we are, we, we haven't had a 9-11, but we definitely have had some crazy times in our lives. We, 20, 2020 has been a very trying year for most of us in one way or another. For, for a lot of us, all of us, we're, we're faced every single day with the coronavirus and putting on masks and things that uh, just they're very constricting. You can't go to places. I just, I just can't wait till the theater's open. I love going to movies, and I just can't. It's just driving me nuts that I can't go to a movie. You know, there's just parts of creature comforts of our life that we have to kind of give up right now. And it's, every time I think they were going to open in July and then they pushed it off to August, and I'm like, okay, great, I can go in August. And, and so then this week, I looked to see what movie maybe I could go to the end of this month, and I realized that they pushed it off into September. And I was like, really? You know, but if that's the worst of our troubles, I'm in pretty good shape, right? So we've got the quarantining. Uh, you know, for those of you watching at home online, I understand that you're there. Some of you are at home because you're trying to be safe and you have... You have some health things that try. To, you want to stay away from any possibility of, of getting something. And I totally get it. And that's why, that's why we're encouraging you to stay at home. That's why I'm so thankful that this church is invested in the ability for us to watch online. But we're, we're quarantining. And, and then we've, we've, got, uh, we've got all of these deaths. You know, I, I was looking up the statistics this week. And at the point that I had looked them up last, it was 180,000 USA deaths due to coronavirus, listed at that. Um, 822,000 worldwide. That's just a staggering amount. Uh, Lynn County, 362 cases, and we've had 12 deaths. Well, it may only seem like 12, it's 12 important people in people's lives, amen? And, and it just gets to us, it, it hurts us, and it, it really affects our lives. And, and then we've got uh, all of the protests and rioters going on right now, and, and that just seems like it's out of control. And, and then we've got forest fires in the southern part of the West Coast area, and that seems like it's out of control, and it really affects our lives. And, and now we've got hurricanes hitting in Louisiana, and that's just out of control. And, and if that's not enough, we've got elections coming up, and that seems like it's out of control, right? Life is just a little bit crazy right now, isn't it? Oh my goodness, it's, it's just catastrophic event after event, and they're happening, but they've been going on for centuries. You realize that, right? They've been going on for centuries, and, and I want to take us to Psalms 46. So if you want to turn somewhere and put your finger there, you can put your finger in your Bible at Psalms 46 today. In Psalms 46, it was written by the sons of Korah, okay? That's who it's attributed to as the writings. Uh, one funny side note, as I was studying out Psalms 46, one of the things that they, they use a, a, a phrase or a word in there that implied that it was to be sung by sung in the high, shrill uh, voice of young virgins. <laughs> so this one was to be sung by ladies who were very young in a very high, shrill voice, is what it was saying. Um, and I won't try that for you. I could, but, you know, it would be really hard. And I, and yeah, no, we won't do that. Um, the, ca the context of the writing of this, just so you know, to give a little history, there's, it's, it's, they're, they're in a, a really serious time of, of just catastrophic chaos going on. Uh, there was some troublesome times, they were being attacked, uh, it was a lot of unparalleled uncertainty in, in, their, um, in the whole nation that was going on there, and so this was one of the responses to that, and the writer's world was crumbling all around him. It was written as a song, right? It's a song that was to be sung, and it had three verses, and each verse had four stanzas in it. So when you're reading this, realize that there's three, three stanzas in that, that kind of how it was written out for us as, as the readers today. And it was written with the nation of Israel in mind and the chaotic times that they were going through, but I kind of think that it might apply into our lives today with some of the chaotic times we're going through. So here's what I want to share with you today. Out of, out of um, Psalms 46, three promises that we can see through from God in these troubled times. So the first one I want, if you're taking notes, you want to write it down, is God is our protector. And I know we know that. I know you say that. I know we've heard that. But still, sometimes it just doesn't hurt to be reminded of it, you know? Uh, if we look at it, we're going to read them, break this down into three segments. But in Psalms 46, 
We're going to read the first three verses here. It says this. God is our refuge and strength in a very present help in trouble. Therefore, because of what we just read, because of what we just heard, what we just heard was that God is our refuge and he is our strength, a very present help in trouble. Because of what we just declared, we will not fear, through the, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though mountains tremble at its swelling. Selah. See, whatever you're facing today, whatever you're facing, fear, whether you're facing anxiety, whether you're facing the coronavirus, maybe it's a surgery, maybe you're facing something else that's going to be coming at you and, and, and you're just not sure how to deal with it. Because how many of you know that even outside of all the things I mentioned, we're still facing things. There's many people that are going through or preparing for surgeries that are coming up in our lives. And all of those things can be very scary in our lives and very uh, fear-filled. And God promises to be our refuge and our strength and our help. Now, when he says that he is our refuge, it's not pointing to a place. He's not pointing to a destination and saying, there is your refuge. He is saying that I am, he is our refuge. He is the one we should be running to in troubled times. He is the one that should, we should be racing in towards. God is our refuge, even when all that seems steady is now unsteady in our lives, you know, and, and there are still states that cannot gather like we're gathering today. The state of California is still not uh, able to be gathering together. When everything that you look at for the rock and for the steadiness, when it's all that way, God is still there and he is still our refuge. When we think of a refuge, it it's actually literally means a, a, a place to flee, as, as in running into an impenetrable shelter, a place to hide in, a place to get away from something. Physically, many of us have been sheltering in place. Many of us have been hiding away, trying to protect ourselves from the things that are coming around us. And we've been told to shelter in place, and that's why we're doing it, for our health and for our safety. And, and I'm really glad that those of you who are watching online are sheltering in place. It is important. But in those moments when we're home or when we're not here, when you're home alone during the waking week and you feel overwhelmed, that's when we need to just seek God and begin to pray and ask Him uh, that, that, to begin to realize and show us that He is our comfort. He is our shelter, just like we hear it in the book of Psalms here. In Psalms 142.5, we find that it says this, I cry to you, O Lord. I say, where are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living? When we need God, we need to call out on Him. When we need his, his comfort, we need to call out on God and cry out to Him and ask Him to be our refuge. Talking about refuge reminds me of a story that uh, my mother-in-law told us uh, a while back. And, and my, my mother-in-law is, is British, so she's from England and uh, met uh, my father-in-law while he was American, while he was over there um, stationed on, in England. And so they met and ended up getting married. But anyway, she was telling us the story of when she was a little girl and uh, during World War II, and the, uh, the air raid sirens would go off, and they all had to run and hurry into the nearest bomb shelters that were around, the place of refuge, and, and how when they got in there, there was some sense of comfort and peace inside of that that room and and that's how we need to look at it when we're feeling unstable when we're feeling crazy when we're feeling unsettled that we need to run into our refuge which is into the presence of God he is our shelter he promises to hide us in his shelter he can help us with his strength the word also says in that scripture that we just read he is a very present help in trouble did you catch that? It's not that he's a present help in trouble. He's a very present help in trouble. And when we look at that word and we see what it's actually saying, very actually is talking about abundantly and greatly. It's like right now in this present situation, I am greatly present for you. I'm not just there if you kind of reach out for me. I am greatly, I'm abundantly there for you. And aren't you glad that we serve a God who is greatly there for us? No matter what the struggle is, anytime we reach out for him, he's right there. 
Amen. I, that, some of you caught that moment. There you go. Thank you. When our security is suddenly gone, we're to seek refuge in God himself. Our feelings of helplessness and fear, they should, should be driven back by him and, and driving us into his presence when we need those moments. There's an author out that I, I enjoy reading. He's actually a lawyer who wrote a couple of books. And uh, he's not your average, normal kind of guy. Uh, some of you will know him when I say the name. His name is Bob Goff. Anybody read any Bob Goff books? Nobody has. You need to get his books. He has a couple called Love Does and Everybody Always. Bob is an unusual gentleman, um, to say the least. But his whole, his whole mindset is about loving everybody as much as you can, whenever you can, at all times, regardless of who they are. That's his whole premise of what he does and who he is. And his story is huge and, and wide, and you would love to read about it, I'm sure. But he says, and I, I read across, ran across a quote of his, he says, it's easy to trust God when he does what we want, right? <laughs> it's the other times in our lives when we grow. It's easy following God when he does what we want, but it's those times, the, the other times when we actually start to grow. You know, because that's the way it is. And I'm praying that this tragedy, this stuff we're going through, will bring us to our knees and bring us to that place of putting our total dependence upon God and running to Him in for shelter and for, for encouragement and strength when we need it because God is our protector. The second thing, if you're, if you're writing them down, is this. God is with us. He's our ever-present help. He's with us. Look at verse 4, and we'll read a few verses down there, 4, four through 7 today. Look at these. It says, There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Now, wait a second. We're going to stop there for, for starters. Anybody who's been to Jerusalem knows there's no river running through Jerusalem, right? There's no river there at all. Uh, in fact, the, the major cities around had rivers, such as Babylon had the Euphrates, Egypt has the Nile, Rome has the Tiber River, but Jerusalem doesn't have a river. So what in the world are they talking about when they say there's a river whose streams make glad the city of God? Here's what he's referring to. It's the next part of that. It says the holy habitation of the Most High God. That is the river that he's speaking of that makes city, make glad the city of God. The, the presence of Almighty God, the fact that he dwells in the city is what causes there to be gladness within the city. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage and the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress, Selah. God promises us shelter when we're going through and when we seek him, when we're going through struggles and we seek him for, for help and comfort. And we don't have to run far to find him because many of you know that the minute you speak his name, he is always there. If you're a child of God, you know that the Holy Spirit of God is residing within you and you have him with you at all times. Thank goodness for Christ sending the Holy Spirit to be our comforter. Amen? And he's here for us. He's always here for us. It's just a matter of are we always listening for him? Are we always reaching out for him? Um, you know, that, that shelter that we're looking for sometimes can be a very hard thing to find because we don't know where to look. A couple of years ago, um, our son and his family in Colorado uh, they had a, a real vicious hailstorm that came along. And, uh, I mean, it just out of nowhere, which happens in Colorado times. But this one was far beyond. We showed up actually right after the hailstorm and saw the damage to uh, my son's in-law's family's home. Uh, there, there was literally siding that had been busted off of the house and was laying on the ground. The hail hit so hard that it shattered windows. Um, the roof was so badly damaged that they had to strip the whole roof off and replace the roof. But you know what's amazing is that when the hailstorm began, they ran inside into the shelter that was right there. They knew that it would protect them, even though there was damage to it, it protected them. And that is what our Father, our Heavenly Father does for us. When we are in a storm and it's raging at us and it's coming on us, that what He does is He says, come on. And He begins to put 
his arms around us and protect us and keep us. He is our comfort. You know, the word in there that uh, describes him is uh, God is most high. Ilion is the name. Ilion. And, and what that is a name for God which refers to uh, the most high God, but I like this better. It says it's the highest of all. In other words, there is no gods that match him. He is the highest of all gods. You know, he is sovereign, he is supreme, he is always present with us whenever we need him in our lives, and we need him today, amen? The last part of verse 5, if you're looking back at that scripture where he says, God will help her when morning dawns. And we have to realize that no matter how bad things get, God's going to help us. When we wake up to the new day, he's there for us. As we lay our heads down at night, he is with us. God is always with us. And then if you looked at verse 6 in what you're looking at there, if you have it in your Bible still, it says God is faithful to us. He will never leave us. He's never going to forsake us. God is present with his people even when, and I like this part, the, the scripture says when the nations rage, the kingdom will not totter. How many of you know that we need that word today? When the nations rage, the kingdom will not totter. It will not be knocked off. It will not be uh, taken down because God is still God. Does this sound like anything we're facing today? That kingdom rage, it, it, that rage, rage word right there is the same word. It's used in verse 3. It's used in other scriptures to describe roaring waters. So the, the, the descriptor that they're using is it's like, it's like raging waters that are coming in on the shore and they just keep coming. And they keep coming, and they keep coming. And you hear that thunderous roar. When I was in Bible school in, in Santa Cruz, California, there were times that I would go down in the evenings when, when I just, I wanted to just get a real sense of calmness. And I would go down and I would lay on the beach, and it was dark at night, and it wasn't when it was raging because it would not be fun at that point. Um, but it was when things were calm, and just to hear the water just lapping in, shh. But there were days when I was down there and it was raging and it was storming and you could just hear the waves roll up and just bam, and you feel them. When it hits the ground, you feel the ground shake. You know what I'm talking about. You, we got Oregon coasts that are always raging, right? Just doesn't seem like they're ever calmed down in Oregon, are they? And that's what he's describing, the, the, the rage that he's talking about when nations totter is that thing that just keeps on pounding and keeps on pounding. And he says, when the nations are agitated, it's like the waves of the sea. God is still with his people. No matter how bad things get, we can always count on his presence because he's always there. In verse 7, another descriptor word in there, it says, the Lord of hosts is with us. You know, uh, I've pointed out two or three so far, different words used for God. And, and just in case some of you don't know, throughout the Bible you'll find many words, and usually it's a single word, or a, and we have a two or three word definition of that to kind of get it written out for us. But the, the Lord of hosts is, is actually Jeho Jehovah Sabaoth. And, and when we look at those different ways that they use to talk about God throughout the Bible, you'll see that they have many different meanings behind them. It, it's a great, way, a great way to explain this would be this here. There's many words to use to describe a father, right, in our English language. We have the word father, and that, you know, we know what that means. We have the word dad, and that means that I'm a teenager and I'm not going to call you father or, or, or daddy. Daddy means I'm pretty young and, and, you know, I really, I still adore you. And dad means I'm a little annoyed with you right now, right, pretty much. Um, and then we have old man, which means I don't... I don't respect you much anymore, or it's a, a term of endearment that our family has used through generations, not mine, but others, you know. Um, or parent actually can mean father, or pops, right, can mean father. And, and so there's a lot of different meanings. And then we get to the, the word grandfather, which means I'm really old and in the world at that time. And Israel was feeling a little bit helpless, a little bit hopeless, like there was nothing they could do. But God had some other plans because how many of you know that a broken bow can do you no good, right? A shattered spear is not very effective, is it? And burned chariots don't help a whole lot, do they? And doesn't it feel just a little bit like there's something we can't do to stop this virus right now? Do you ever feel like that? I feel like, man, Lord, really? 
there's just, it's just like it's there and we can't do anything about it. We have felt helpless and hopeless, just like they felt hopeless and hopeless for quite some time. And in his position as sovereign king, God is in charge. And we know that and we are quick to declare that in our own lives. It would seem like the coronavirus, though, has ripped away from us the illusion that we had any control in our lives, wouldn't you say? Feels like it's just been stripped away from us because now we have to, you wear that mask. You can't come shop here until you do this. You know, you need to sanitize your hands. And, and there's all these things. And here's what he says. Here's what the, the author of this song says. It says, be still. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. What does be still mean? Be still means to cast down or to let fall. And, and it's used a lot in reference to warriors releasing their weapons, dropping their weapons, opening your hands. And what I believe what he's trying to say here to us, the author is saying, open your hands, let go of all of the fight that you've been trying to fight in the physical and let God fight. Because our weapons are not weapons of this world, are they? Those are carnal. Our weapons are weapons in the Spirit. And when we begin to pray, we have the most powerful weapon of all because the highest of the Lord's army is for us. Is there an amen anywhere in the house? We're supposed to cease fighting the battle that we can't win anyway. It's the idea of not putting forth any exertion or, or trying to accomplish it. It's to surrender and let God. Surrender and let God. Psalms 37, 7 says this. Be still in the presence of the Lord. Wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper. And God is above us. He is God of all. We need to put our hope in God. Would you bow your heads and pray with me today? Today, Lord, I know in this house there are many people that are fearful. And Lord, not even in this, just in this house, but God, even those that are online with us today, we need to be reminded to put our hope in you, to put our trust in you, that you are the God of all, and that you love us dearly and desperately and will shelter us in those times. And today in this service, as your heads are bowed, and just as a moment of reflection for you, it's time for us to be the church, church. All that's going on has highlighted the importance of the church being the church in our society, in our community, in whatever it is we're facing. And we need to stop playing games and living a life that doesn't share that with others. We need to come together and pray as if everything depends on it because it really does. We need to deal decisively with our sin that's in our lives, whether it's something as simple as fear or whatever it may be in our lives and practice grace and forgiveness with others and mercy. It's time to set aside fear and to look to God and trust Him and to put our hope in Him. Not to put our hope in the CDC or in our doctors or in the police who all of them are wonderful and well-meaning and do such a great job, but you know what? Our hope has to be first and foremost in God has to be in God. And today I would love to be able to pray with you. Maybe you're sitting there and fear has gotten a hold of you. And, and you're saying to yourself, I need to lay down some fear. I need to lay down some worry. I, I need to be, I needed today to be reminded to put my hope in God. No matter what I'm facing, no matter what's coming down, I needed to be reminded of this today and I need to put my trust in the Lord. And I'm so glad that today I can do that. I would love to pray with you today, just to encourage you. If that's you today, and you say, yeah, that's, that's me, I, I would just really covet your prayers, Pastor. Who in the house would just lift a hand and say, yeah, thank you. Is there others? Thank you. I see hands going up as I'm looking around. Is there more that would say, yes, that's me. Thank you. Thank you. Is there others that will join these that have already said, yeah, that's me today? I need to put my hope back into the Lord, even though I know I love Him. It's not that you don't love God. Sometimes we get so focused on the yuck that's going on around us, we forget that God is greater than all of that. Is there anyone else in the house today that say, yeah, can you pray for me, Pastor? Anybody else? 
All right, let me pray for you. So today, God, I just encourage all of us here, Lord, especially those who've raised their hands, for us to keep our mind on you. For us to be fully aware of who you are in our lives. And as we put our hope and our trust and our dependence back on you, God, I pray for peace. The peace that your word describes as peace that passes any kind of understanding. We shouldn't have it, and yet we do. I pray for that kind of peace over people's lives, God. That while everything around us goes crazy and the storm rages and things are going uh, amazingly crazy, yet we have peace. I speak that peace over these lives today. And I ask you to touch them today and encourage each and every one who responded and those who, Lord, who didn't respond but who need that peace anyway. For those viewers at home, Lord, who right now are feeling the need for peace, whether it's fear, whether it's anxiety, whether it's worry, whether it's the need for hope, whatever it is, God, I pray that right now you would begin to put that into their home and into their life. Settle a peace in on them in Jesus' name. And as you continue with your heads bowed, I'm just going to ask the next question, which I always ask every week, and that is to give you an opportunity to know the one who gives me peace. His name is Jesus. And folks, i got to tell you, we got to get ready for the return of Christ. You know, this, this serves as a reminder that this world is not, uh, it, it's not going to last forever. You know what I mean? This world is going to come to the point when Jesus is going to need to return. And he's going to come back, and we better be ready. The coronavirus is terrible, but let me tell you what, eternity in hell is even worse. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, then you're in deep trouble because we all need a Savior. We need Him to stand between us and the Father and say, no, that His sin is forgiven. He's with me. And today, maybe you're here and you say, you know what, Pastor, I need to know Jesus in that way. Maybe you're at home, you're sitting there on your TV and you're watching, and you need to say, you're maybe saying, you know what, I need to know Jesus in that way. I don't know him as my Lord. If that's you today, I would love to be able to pray with you. We all would love to be able to pray with you today and encourage you in, the, in that and know that you have the chance to be in right relationship with Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. And if that's you today, and I would love to be able to pray with you and encourage you, would you slip a hand up and say, yeah, that's me. Can you pray with me? Maybe you've, you've stepped away from relationship with God and it's time for you to step back into that relationship again. Maybe you're at home and you're feeling that. And it's that time, it's that moment when you step out and say, yes, I need Jesus to be my Lord in my life because I'm not living for Him. And if that's you today, would you just, in this moment, we're going to pray together. I'm going to encourage everybody to pray because I don't want anybody to ever pray alone in this place. So would we all pray together this simple prayer that just is putting to words what your heart is already crying out for, and that is to be in relationship with Jesus. Will you say this? Say, dear Jesus, be my Savior. Be my Lord. I want to live my life for you. I confess my sin to you, and I believe in you as the Savior of the world, as the Savior of my life. I give my life to you today, and I ask you to touch me and help me, because I know this won't be easy, but I know together we can walk this life out. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for coming and dying for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Today, if you prayed that prayer, I encourage you just to simply take that connect card that you got on your way in right on there, your name and a way to contact you a simple way to contact you that says if, if you know, that I prayed this prayer today, can you please communicate with me and help me walk out this faith journey I would love to do that, if you're at home, you can do that above you or below you on the website there, depending on how you're watching it let us know today, will you do that stand with me together, and before you leave I have one last thing I want to mention to you come on, let's stand together today, and know the joints are stiff. It's okay. Ugh, everything pops and clicks when I stand up now, right? On your way out today at, at each entrance, we actually have uh, for you a little booklet that we wanted to give you. Just something to help you this week uh, called Clinging to Hope in the Storm. It's a little booklet. Just share some scriptures with you a little more about what we talked about today. 
just a chance for you to maybe have a little devotional on that each day of this week. I encourage you to take one of those for family and, and walk through those this week. We want you to be encouraged and know that we're thinking of you. We love you. We're praying for you. If you need prayer, speaking of prayer, if you need prayer today for anything, please step forward. I'll be happy to be pray, able to pray with you today before you leave. If you have any need, if you want the altars are open, you can come spend some time with the Lord today before you take off. I'm going to say God bless you. Greet one another as you leave today. But if you need prayer, come join me. If you need to just find a place to pray, come on down today. God bless you.